Okay, let's talk about the best way to solve this equation. Then we'll talk about uh, the worst way you can solve this equation as well. And uh, somebody out there might be saying, well, does it really make a difference as long as I get the right answer? That's what counts. Yes, that's true as well. However, you always want to be as efficient as possible when you're uh, doing math problems, okay? Because obviously you're going to be taking tests and quizzes and you're under a particular uh, time constraint. But even beyond that, if a problem can take you a lot less work, okay, and less steps, and it's more of a direct path, that's the path you want to be taking. It's not like a really an optional thing. Be like, well, I'll just take this path. No, not really. You need to know um, all the different options you have available to you when you're solving an equation in algebra, and then you'll want to select, obviously, the best uh, path for that particular equation. So that's why when you're learning things like quadratic equations or systems of equations, there's a lot of different type of equations where there's different things you can do, different techniques you can use to solve that equation. You need to know all of them because you need to assess your options before you start a problem. So that's kind of the big um, uh, main point to this uh, one problem is, listen, you know, when you're solving quadratic equations, for example, you just can't say, hey, I love uh, the quadratic formula. That's the one thing that I'm going to use all the time, no matter what. Well, that's not smart, and uh, you need to know all the different techniques. So we're going to uh, obviously um, highlight some of the things that you don't want to do, and then we'll take the best path to solve this particular problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I'd like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. That's a pretty bold statement. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. But you can find a link to um, my math help program in the description of this video. Basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. Uh, but I also have many, many test preparation courses. So if you're studying for like the GED, HiSET, uh, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, um, AccuPlacer, uh, Alex, CLEP exam, uh, maybe a teacher certification exam like uh, the uh, Praxis exam, or a nursing entrance exam like the TEAS, there's tons of exams out there that people have to take. And these exams have considerable amount of math on it. And if you don't get to the math portion of these exams, you don't pass these exams. So a lot of people out there are trying to uh, review and relearn a lot of math. So anyways, I've constructed uh, excellent test preparation courses. Just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. I should have what you need. If I don't, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you are a homeschooler, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously I help those of you who are just struggling in your current math class. But uh, one of the things that I can't do for you, there's a lot I can do for you, a lot of assistance, but the one thing I can't do for you that you must do for yourself, and that is this, that's notes. Okay, so over decades of teaching mathematics through my observation and experience, one thing is crystal clear to me those students who take the effort, um, really put in the time uh, to take excellent, I'm not talking about good, I'm talking about great math notes, almost always do very well in math. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to uh, use math class as a time to check out their cell phone and talk to their friends and maybe do their homework for another class, all the things that I uh, did back in the 1980s, except for the cell phone part, I wish I had a cell phone back then, but it's a good thing that I didn't because I would have been completely distracted. I was already distracted enough, so I get it. No one out there is um, perfect, and it's easy to get distracted with other things that you might feel important. But here's the deal. If you can't stay focused while you're learning math, um, you're not going to learn math. Okay, And the only activity that's going to keep you focused is note-taking. And you can't be inconsistent. You can't be like, oh, I'll take notes sometimes, and then other times I'll uh, not take notes. You know, it, it, you have to be completely committed and consistent in order for you really to kind of not miss anything. So uh, anyways, enough on notes. you got to uh, have great notes. So strive to improve. But in the meantime, if you need something to study from, and of course you do, I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so uh, let's get back to our equation here. Now, if you think you can solve it, uh, I would say pause the video and solve it and see 
uh, what path uh, you'll take. But let's just talk about this equation in general. Okay, so what type of equation is this? Well, hopefully this right here, this little 2 and this little x here, um, kind of says, you know what, I think this is a quadratic equation. And if you said quadratic equation, then I must give you a happy face. And uh, I'm not going to give you an A plus or anything like that, but I will give you a happy face because that's very good. It is a quadratic equation, so good for you for recognizing that is a quadratic equation. Now, tell me something about quadratic equations, right? What should we be expecting here? And this is the second little pop quiz. So if you tell me that uh, we will always have two solutions when you're dealing with a quadratic equation, then I'm going to give you a little check mark. Okay, that's fantastic, right? There's always going to be two solutions. Now, these solutions can be real or imaginary numbers. That's a whole other dis uh, discussion. But basically, when we solve this equation, we need to find two solutions, not one. Okay, now what are our options okay so here's another question for you so what are techniques that we can kind of bring to this uh problem to solve it well let's talk about some okay so the first is you can factor all right if you can factor factor right then you can take the square root of uh, uh, both sides of the equation if you can now factoring and taking the square root of both sides of each uh of uh, both sides of the equation, these are situational based. In other words, you may or may not be able to do these. Okay, now if you can't do these, what else can I do? Well, I can always break out the good old quadratic formula. Okay, and then if I really want to, you know, take the long route, I can do completing the square. Now you do need to understand how to do complete the square. The quadratic formula is kind of like a shortcut to completing the square, but here's kind of our basic options, okay? If you can't factor, can't take the square root of both sides, then you have to use a quadratic uh, formula. And then obviously you can uh, choose to use complete the square as well. So these are uh, kind of like some hints here on how to approach this problem. So what do you think we can do here? All right, like what's the best approach? Well, what you don't want to do is the following. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the worst way to approach this problem. You don't want to start squaring this. Okay, you're like, well, let me see here. I'll take 2x plus 1, and then I'll multiply it by 2x plus 1, and then I'll get a big old uh, polynomial. I'll set it equal to 0, and then maybe I'll use the quadratic formula. Now, that's, you know, I commend you on at least having some approach to this problem, but that's not the way you want to go, okay? What you need to do is recognize that this is a situation where we're going to take the square root of both sides, and it's kind of like completing the square, if you kind of recognize it. So let's get into the best approach. So this is, you don't want to do this. Okay, so this is kind of the worst way. Uh, the best way is to recognize what, you know, what your options are and to select this option right here. So let me go ahead and show you this now. Okay. All right. So here I have a square. All right. This is 2x plus 1 square. And I have uh, this 16 here. But if I can move this 16 over to the other side of the equation, and I can, then I have two things here. I have something squared equals a real number, okay? And this is kind of what um, you end up with when you do completing the square. But you need to recognize that right here, I can take the square root of both sides, okay? And when I do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the result of doing that. And when I take the square root of 2x plus 1 squared, the answer here is going to be 2x plus 1. And then when I take the square root of 16, okay, again, I'm taking a square root of both sides, I'm going to get positive and negative 4, all right? Remember, when you take the square root of a real number, there's always going to be a uh, positive and negative version. So the square root of 25 will be plus and minus 5. You've probably seen this a lot, this little plus and minus. That means the answer is a positive 5 and a negative 5, right? But instead of writing it like this, we just write it like so. Okay, so this is uh, the most efficient direct path to this problem, but we're not done yet. So we have 2x plus 1 is equal to positive and negative 4. So what we need to do is just set up two equations. So we say, okay, 2x plus 1, you're equal to a positive 4, and 2x plus 1, you're equal to a negative 4. Remember, we're looking for two solutions, and this is how we kind of get them, because we have our little positive and negative um, over here, okay, our positive 
and negative versions of this answer. Okay, so this is kind of standard uh, procedures or uh, steps that we take to solve quadratic equations. Now we can just go ahead and finish up 2x plus 1 is equal to 4, subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, I end up with 2x is equal to 3, divide both sides of the equation by 2, I get x is equal to 3 halves, so this is one solution, and then over here I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, I get 2x is equal to negative 5, and then here, divide both sides of the equation by 2, I get x is equal to negative 5 halves. So this is one solution, and this is the other two solutions as promised. Okay, so if you got this problem right, I must now give you a happy face with a little mohawk, an A plus, a 100%, okay? And I'll give you two stars, all right? This wasn't the easiest problem. It wasn't the most difficult um, as well, but really... I want to congratulate you on uh, knowing what techniques to take, okay? So let's suppose you did this problem on your own. You did the quadratic formula and you got the same answers. That's good too. Matter of fact, I will give you a little, I'll give you a uh, happy face. Maybe I might have to skip on the mohawk, but I will give you a happy face because you know what? You showed that you were able to solve the problem. However, you need to know the most efficient techniques. And the only way you're going to uh, know the best way to do a problem is to practice all of this stuff. So when you're solving quadratic equations or you're learning anything in mathematics, you have to learn everything. And you gotta practice everything. And it's really just through experience and, and uh, practice that you're gonna be able to pick up on the best techniques to solve an equation, okay? So hopefully this uh, video was like, oh, you know, interesting, revealing, you know, helpful. And if it was, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I'm sure I have a thousand uh, plus videos on my channel by now. Um, I just post videos. My passion is to teach math in a clear and understandable way. That's my goal. Um, nobody should be failing math, okay? Uh, if you're struggling in mathematics, there's two things going on. One, you need to work harder. You're likely not taking excellent math notes, okay? Uh, the second thing is you need to really uh, engage with your teacher in terms of like, hey, you know, ask for help, extra help. Uh, that's the next thing you need to be doing. But beyond that, if you feel like you can't, uh, you're not connecting with your teacher's teaching style, well, then there's tons of options, but you have to take the initiative to go out there and find other instruction that can help support you. So like my instruction, if you like the way I teach, well, I have uh, hundreds and literally a thousand plus videos on my channel basic to advanced mathematics, and uh, they're organized in various playlists. But again, if you really like my teaching style, then you'll want to sign up for one of my uh, math courses. Of course, you know where to find that, okay? These uh, links will be in the description of this video. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.